This is a look at web scraping using regular expressions and Scrapey. Often you will have an unordered list and potentially the items may the attributes may move around depending on the quantity. Um, sometimes you may have five or eight and if you're always looking for the sixth one, <laughs> sometimes it will be there, sometimes it won't. So I'm scraping a ebay.de German real estate site and I'm looking for the year when the property was built so what I'm doing is finding the <clears throat> finding all of the selectors for the unordered list items and then I'm passing them with regular expressions so the regular expression aspect could apply to any Python or any other code for that matter so uh, if you follow along with this you will get a feel for what you can do with regular expressions and you can also understand that Scrapey uh, is not just extracting raw data you can process and clean up the data before you insert it into the CSV and um, obviously CSV is one of the most common formats to export from Scrapey but there are others and also you can use pipelines and insert to uh, SQL. If you've not seen my other videos then I cover that in my Amazon price tracker and a couple of others so um, yeah if this is the first time you've watched the channel welcome and this channel consists of mainly Python uh, related uh, code demos tutorials call them what you will and if you've got any suggestions comments feel free to add this is an open forum so if you really want me to look at, demonstrate, struggle, grapple with something else related to Python and coding, then please let me know. Um, coming up in the future, I'm probably going to look at um, where Python sits in relation to, well not just Python, but Python modules on top of that. So I'll be looking at Python modules, Python, how it's written in C, um, how C actually talks to the processor, um, assembly language for instance. Uh, we'll look at some of those other things and ha see how it all fits together. So that's going to be coming up soon. Um, if you don't want to see that then let me know as well. So I hope this is a good video for you and if it's too long, too short, let me know. Good, so you can see the target site here which is uh, ebay and We've got 621 properties and we want to extract some text from each individual listing which is not belonging to an ID tag or a class in particular. So um, here you can see, for those of you who don't speak German, neither do I, but I happen to know that Baujar equals Bildier and that's um, so there we go, 1966. And that's a piece of information that the, the customer actually wants. So here we can see it's down here. So um, it's in the first column and it's at the bottom. Now, if we go to the next one, it's not guaranteed to be in the same place. So we can identify it by its position in the um, unordered list. So if we try another one, bear with me while it loads. As though it's in the same place there. What horrible t-shirts. Anyway, so let's um, let's think about how we're going to extract that because we can't extract it using an ID tag, which uh, let me just demonstrate one more and uh, <laughs> it'll probably be in the same place. Where well, is there actually? <laughs> well, trust me, it's not always in that place. If there's only uh, four pieces of information, it might well be only the fourth thing there. So there we can see, let me just make that a little bit bigger. Then it's here, and just drag that across. So we've got the container, and then inside the div, we have, so we've got add, add details list. And you can see we've got, each one of these has a class. So it's a list item class added details list dash detail. But there's no way of individually picking out those. As you can see, other than using an index number, which I can assure you is unreliable, we need to do something a bit 
more sophisticated. So as you can see here, bow jar and there we go, bow jar 1971. And also if we look at this, oh that's interesting. Look, you see if I highlight 1971, I'm also getting uh, provision. And there we go. So 1971, that's the piece of information we want. And so it's added details list dash detail dash value. Right. Well, what I've done already is I've gone to, the, I've taken the liberty of extracting that already. And what I've got is, uh, just show you my scraper. So I've got def pass, pass details as usual. And then when I get down to uh, measure, I'm getting all of that container. So better. So uh scrapey shell i'm running vs code on linux and this is really good by the way they really recommend it even i'm not the world's greatest advocate of all things from seattle but it's free i'm not donating any more money to them so i'm so what i'm gonna <laughs> so about that right I need to get the um, get the URL first, which is here. Yeah, paste that in there that I've just copied across from the browser that I showed you. There we go. And spider opened crawl two hundred, so it's crawled it. And um, let's get a response. Let's see what our next path of response gives us. So I've started on this already, but it needs uh, needs some fine tuning, which is what I thought I'd show you in this video. So uh, let's go to bow jar. This is my initial selector, which is work was work in progress, and I just thought I'd show you me developing it. So there we go. I've entered that. And it's got me all of the container. So if you remember what we were looking at, all of those list items. So added details, it's got an entire div and somewhere in there, we've got the bow jar. <laughs> I think it's called bow jar. So you'll see that that's here and the date is over here. So not even within the same span so what we need to do is something like what I did before on the Imonet scraper so if you remember that um, I'm just going to bring up um, sublime text as I've got my old example in there and this is sublime text is fantastic for developing stuff because um, because you can actually do a uh, live regular expression. You don't have to keep doing sort of uh, control save, run, and then you get an error and so on. You can you can do it dynamically. So let's uh, just show you where I've got to so far. And so what I've done is I've collected all of what you've just seen in the scrapey shell. And I've set that into um, a bit like a doc string, so three quotes, and I set it to TX. And that gets us way too much, so. <laughs> okay, so this is my version, and uh, let's, say, let's see if anyone else can do this better. I'm sure there's some amazing people on Stack Overflow who could do this shorter, but. Uh, let's just try this. So I'm going to go up as far. Ah, there we go. So we want to, um, the forward slash lowercase s is spaces. So one or more spaces. And then we go up to a digit forward slash D. And is it, uh, the year is always going to be four digits. So let's put four in there. and I think that is enough so 
If we can retrieve that, what we can then do is we can split it on the space, <laughs> the big space. And then we will get uh, one, two, one space, two spaces. So we will get oh, one, two. We will get uh, the second index of uh, following the split. So let's try that. I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to copy and paste that in in a minute. So. Equals. And then, have I imported? I have imported regular expression module. Yes, import RE on line six. There we go back down. And we will say re.search. So you can use find all in um, re.sub and re.compile and so on. So, but here we're using search. And then you can do R for raw. I think if you're using a um, text string in quotes, then that's the way to do it. So. No, in actual fact, we can just use a single quote uh, jar. And then we've got our regular expression that we've just tested in Sublime Text. So I'm going to copy and paste that. That needs to go inside the quotes as well. Is the text big enough? Let me just make it a tad bigger. There we go. Oh, that's better. And um, let's see. What do we need to do next? We need to. Uh, that's going to come through as a list. From, from so line 92, that bow, the bow job variable is going to be a list, so we're going to need to do uh, join and then the, so what we're going to, I, I hope this isn't confusing, but I'm actually using the same variable name. So from line 92, bow job is actually getting uh, the other details list, and that will be um, the commerce operator, it will be a list, and um, then. Uh, I'm just going to do try because I don't want it to break the spider. So let's do that. Put that in there. Get rid of that line. So try search for the word Bowser in our variable Bowser, which is the, what we get from uh, when we do get all on. Our response x path for added details list then we will say um we need to split it then so we've we've joined it so it's a whole string of text and then we need to split it because we get with the uh, search you get groups so you do m dot group m basically is the the shorthand what does it mean it just means match so we've got a variable m which is our match so group dot split and we wanted the second index because uh, we had we had that one space in between uh if I drag this across now or not uh, no it's not going on top but we had the one space uh before span and then we had the big load of spaces so we actually want the third item which will be x2 and then we do accept And then we're just going to say Bajar equals NA. And we're almost at the point of testing this, everybody. So fasten your seatbelts and let's see what happens. So um, let me just see if I can run it from here. 
It's not liking it. Problems. Invalid syntax, pylint, 5519. 55? I've got a random list, empty list variables there. Um, hmm. I know what you say. I know what you're going to say. Why are you using um, terminal when you've got built-in terminal editor of VS Code? I just thought it'd be easier for you to see. That's all, honestly. And already I can see Bowser appearing. <laughs> uh, who wants to watch this? No. Right. Let's go back and within. There we go. So. We've extracted four, four digits, which represent the year, and that's the build year of the property. So to summarize, <laughs> apart from the few errors, what we've done is we've used uh, get all to get all of the contents of um, Let me show you again. We've got all of the contents of this details list because they don't necessarily always have these features. So occasionally they won't fill one of them in and then the list order will change. So I, I was ending up with number of floors and the number of floors was 1,971. Uh, so you end up needing to get the whole block. That's why I'm using get all. And then when I've got all. And how did I know that uh, this selector worked? Well, you can test it if you've not seen before in my other videos. What you can do is if you do Control F in, in the browser, and then you can paste in what you think will be the uh, suitable XPath selector. And there, this is it's finding naught. But if you do text after it, uh, text there. And it still finds not. <laughs> um, why is that? Added details list. Oh, there's a there's a quote there. Sorry about that. So then added details list forward slash text, and it's finding three. But we're more we're actually more interested in uh, that unordered list. So. What we could do is we could say, we could try and, uh, let's put li in there. Yeah, so if we put ul here, which is um, it's before the predicate, the predicate is what you've got in the square brackets. So you just identify it there with the ul unordered list, and then you get two unordered, three unordered lists, and I do believe we're on the first one. Let's have a look at the second one. It should toggle through them. I don't know why that's not doing that, but anyway, we've we've pretty much identified a, a starting selector, should we call it, a selector to to begin to get going with. And um, scrapey shell. followed by fetch and then whatever the URL of your page is, which is that. Put that in the quotes, inside the quotes. Press enter, which will go off and fetch it. And then uh, we need to then go back to the browser and we use this for the beginnings of our selector so response.xpath and that's where you do the two forward slashes single quotes two forward slashes ul um, and then paste in the rest 
am I going to get for pasting all that? Okay. Yeah, so then you, I could have just pasted in what I had in the browser, what I tested in the browser. And then just put the closing quote on that in the right place. So it's inside the... It's always inside the... The closing parentheses. And it's got all of those. So if we then do get all... <laughs> you'll see it's got a load of so the text it's not always the text that you need you need to get the whole selector which is what I've done there so if we were doing a similar thing here we would do import re um, in fact we could do this very same thing in here so uh, let me just let me just call back up my regular expression so then we could do um, so what we'll do is we'll call that add details equals responsible x path and then we will say match equals re dot search and then you do the r and then you open the quotes and then we were going to join dot, join our added details. It's important you do that because it's a list, so you, otherwise you'll get an error. And then put bow jar, one or more characters, uh, not all more characters, one or more characters of one slash, oh, so backslash lowercase s for spaces, one or more of those, then D for digits, and then we want four of them because it's a year. And oh, it was add details, wasn't it? Add details. There we go. And then we did, uh, oh, let's call it response equals m dot group uh, dot split and then we wanted the second item and then if we print that response um, I hope we'll get what will we get we'll get the 1971 which is good which is what we had there 1971. So there you can see what I've just done, apart from that error there. Ignore that. Um, so I did import re, added details. So I created a variable which represented the response of get all from that XPath for all of the unordered list. I did m, which is n for match, equals re.search, and then I searched for Bowjar. Um, not all more characters, one or more characters, uh, then space, lots of spaces, then four digits. So I was looking for the four digits at the end of that. Response. So then from the response, you have to ungroup it, or you have to identify the use m dot group. So the mat, the group of the match object split it and then I wanted the third part it's because there were two spaces in that string and I wanted the part of the text after the second space so therefore it's the third object which is the second index so there we go 1971 so you've watched the entire video watching a man try to extract 1971 from <laughs> an eBay property listing but um, seriously, this is uh, very powerful, and it will get you out of trouble if you if if you've only ever tried to do things using the indexes before, and things move about on the page depending on how much data has been added to the page. Obviously, not all listings have every every attribute added. So, um, as I said previously, I was getting. Um, 
for the number of floors, I was getting 1971. And I don't know about you, but I don't know if any properties have got 1,971 floors. Thanks for watching, and then we'll be back, 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 back soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.